kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, So, um, also, uh, Anique, I appreciate the comment here. You can accelerate some of the depreci depreciation costs uh, with cost segregation as well. So, um, I think what he is referring to, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Anique, uh, is the first seven years, you can take that depreciation for the first seven years up front, for the first, in the first year if you want. You just now can't take them you know, you can, you, you can two, two bundle step. it. Yeah. You, you can bundle that all together. Um, but if you don't need to, you don't need to, you know, so it, it really just depends on your certain circumstances. Uh, mm -hmm. So what happens is a lot of people, they'll do that. And then next year they're going to buy two or three more properties and they're going to do the same thing on those, you know? Mm -hmm. So it all depends on, on your situation and, and, you know, your tax guy will be able to explain all that too. So, okay. So, um, screening for, um, section eight clients, uh, do you get like a list of people from the county office and you can kind of look at backgrounds or whatever, and then contact them and find out who you want to rent to, or is there a priority given to, uh, single parents with children or, yeah, so um, Anique, I just want to, uh, Section 8 inspections, Anique is a actually an investor who does Section 8. Oh, and okay. um, so he says that they are actually easier to pass than some city inspections. So you really don't have any issue. Basically, if you have a, um, all it is is a tenant coming to you and saying, hey, I got a Section 8 voucher. Do you take Section 8? Mm -hmm. Some people don't. And... Uh, because they have a bad stigma about it, but mm -hmm. you just vet the tenant just like any other tenant. So make mm -hmm. sure, you know, do it. You can do a credit check on them. Uh, you can make sure that they don't have evictions, things like that, which if they're coming back with a section eight, they shouldn't have evictions, mm -hmm. but you can still check all the references. You still have to um, vet a tenant just like you normally would. Okay. Okay. So, what about the duration of the lease? Is there any mandatory section eight, you know, saying, Hey, you have to keep them at least six months or at least a year, or is it I, whatever you negotiate with the renter? It's usually at least a year, at least a year, at least a year. Now keep in mind the longer term, uh, the longer term you have, the better. Okay. Why is it? Because now that's guaranteed income. But if you mm -hmm. think the rents are going to go up, say next year, then have only a one year lease so you can raise the rents on one of the lease renewals. Okay. Mm -hmm. The downfall with section eight is if you want to raise the rent next year, now mm -hmm. you have to put in a request to section eight to be able to raise the current section eight tenants rent. Okay if you're sticking with the same same tenant that is okay okay the section eight they have to approve the the increase in rent okay okay so, so and they go mean, by they go by the rent in the, the rentals in the area so mm -hmm. keep that in mind if you're trying to go above the rentals in the area it's not going to get approved now all of a sudden if they came out with the the, the new data after the past year and those rentals went up, then you can do that. Okay. What if you just improved your property? You know, maybe the surrounding community didn't uh, you know, increase it, but you added air conditioning, for instance, or added a garage or something. Would there be an opportunity there to go back and say, hey, I've improved the property. The mm -hmm. value of the property is higher. Therefore, Section 8 at should the, be a little higher. At the end of the lease, that is an argument you can, you can uh -huh. make. Um, but
but at the same point your section eights are usually the the, the highest you're going to get anyways so okay. um if they they come out every year with the rental rates for the areas okay, okay? and you if they increase then you have no problem but they're not gonna you, basically that's your ceiling is what they put out okay but then so, the renter could always come back and say i want to stay in the property i'll pay the extra hundred dollars that you're looking for or something they can okay they, they can and section eight doesn't care because the the renter is going to be you know uh forking over the additional dollars i mean i i can't i can't say whether that will actually go through or not mm -hmm. um you know the only thing that i can i i think you have to still get it approved by section eight in order for them to be obligated to pay okay so let's okay. say you do sign up a, a a tenant with a section eight would the renter still receive the voucher or the landlord so the, all they do is they receive a piece of papers with it's called a voucher okay uh -huh. um and that is what you're allowed that's what they're allowed to to have okay and uh just real quick anik was saying there are limits to what the tenant is allowed to pay out of pocket oh so that's the reason yeah okay so thank you anik for that uh there are limits to you know because they go by the income they go by a percentage of their income oh, okay? okay that's the reason why but um so that voucher is i believe the max that they can pay okay okay um and so it's so, based on it here you go it, it's based on the tenant's income and what monthly housing expenses they have so if they have more monthly housing expenses things like that mm -hmm. so in, in in other words somebody with more kids is going to have more expenses mm -hmm. so there so is sure a, a formula for that yes I, I don't have that formula, but that, right. it, we leave that up to Section 8. We don't care about that. All okay. we care about is the voucher that they give us. Okay. And that voucher is, okay, it says the tenant pays this much, Section 8 pays this much. Okay. 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 Now, when you do that, when you first start off, my recommend, if you want to do Section 8, my always my recommendation is just talk with a property manager okay mm -hmm. that is used to doing section eight mm -hmm. okay that has done section eight has experience you have to vet your property manager just like you vet your tenants because mm -hmm. there are a lot of property managers out there unless you're gonna grind and do it yourself you know mm -hmm. sure. um in, in my opinion you know i like developing systems where i'm as hands off as possible. Like I may start off with it, but I want to develop a system where I can back off. Okay. You know? So that system would be having a property manager do it, but I got to make sure I have trust in that property manager as well. So I got to vet that property manager just as much as I vet that tenant. Okay. So um, let's say you, you find somebody you want to uh, rent to, can you require yeah. a deposit from a Section 8 person? Or is there some kind of rules that say, no, you can't require a deposit? So, I mean, there are, there's a security deposit. So right. that, that's a standard, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. you, you would still get a- low income might not have, you know, a uh, one month now, rent. Now, as far as the security deposit, I'm not sure um, how that works. Maybe Section 8 covers some of that. Um, Anik, maybe if you can comment in there, cause you've had that experience, that, that'd be great. Um, just cause I haven't, I, I only know the theories on it. So, um, okay. but, uh, section eight does help, should help with that as well. So, okay. um, but yeah. Okay. For, um, and kind of a follow up question to that. Uh, would the renter be putting like the utilities in their name or would you be responsible for it in a Section 8 situation? No. So the the utilities all go in the tenant's name. Okay. Uh, okay. So 
Uh, and he says the tenant is usually responsible for a secured deposit. Okay. okay. So um, the uh, the tenant puts all the utilities usually go. You have in your lease, you have to require that. Okay. Okay. That um, now water bill because <laughs> there it kind of stays with the property. There's a you can require the tenant to put the water in their name and and do all of that. Um, sometimes, you know, landlords don't like to do that. What they do is they just do a chargeback um, of what the water bill actually is. You can't make legally. You cannot make money off of the water bill. So literally, the only thing you can do is you can actually you just charge exactly what that water bill is. Okay. Okay. So, um, so there's, there's a few different options with that. Um, you can require, like I said, you can require the tenant to have it in their name and you require it in their lease, in the lease. But I believe you have to re when you renew that lease, you have to require that as well. And there's a, like a, a, an extra document that has to be signed. So. Okay. So what, what happens in a situation where the tenant really likes the property and wants to get on a, uh, uh, you know, kind of a rent to own, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, situation, um, yeah. does tenant, uh, section eight, like end at that time, or can that person continue to use section eight money and actually be like buying the property? You know what I'm no, referring they, to? Yeah, like I know a, what you're referring to. It, you're entering into what's called either a land contract or a lease option. So a lease, and they're two different things. Land contract, they actually own the property. They're buying mm -hmm. the property. They're just at the end, um, you know, and thank you, Michael, for, for kind of getting around it. He says no. So, <laughs> and that's kind of what I was getting around to. So it, at the end, you're they're buying the property, and so mm -hmm. you can't you know you can't have somebody else pay for that. So right. essentially, now you're going from being a renter uh -huh. to an owner, and even the same thing with a lease option. Not you're you're renting it, you're still renting it, but you have the option to purchase it at the, for a fixed price at the end. Okay. So okay. like you can have a, what's called a lease option for the next two years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that two years, it's a fixed price that you, you came up with in the beginning. There's no, okay, we're going to come up to market rents or market prices. No, if market prices went above what you said, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They can purchase it for that price. Now they can choose at that option, not to exercise that right. Mm hmm. And right. none of with a lease option, none of those, the rent actually goes towards the purchase price. Okay. So okay, what, the, what about the termination of a, a lease? Let's say somebody is like, yep. "Hey, I got a yep. better job down in Ohio. I'm I'm leaving." Um, mm -hmm. What would happen with a, a, a Section Eight after, let's say, um, nine months out of a one year lease? Would they would uh, Section Eight? help still pay for the last three months do you know it's kind of a I unique situation but. yeah so in your lease you have a breaking clause and usually it's um everyone's different on what they put but you know i my experience is like okay you can pay up to the end of the lease or up until i put somebody in in the property okay okay so now will section eight help pay for that if they're trying to get section eight where they're going to uh -huh. probably not so but i can't say that for sure because i'm not an expert at that that's um i you know so that's just kind of like a question mark but keep that in mind that your lease is though as long as you're not breaking any laws Mm -hmm. in your lease okay you have to go by what your lease says okay 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 so you have to write the lease the way you can and that's where having a, a, a lawyer go over your lease a real estate lawyer okay. go over your lease helps <clears throat> okay
it was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room